Hello, my dear friend. You are welcome to the Hope Channel Ghana and the Voice of Hope Media. God bless you so much for your presence with us today as we are climbing in the program Hope in the Dark. God bless you. God bless you. Indeed, I don't know how to say it, that God should bless you. And I mean it. God bless you. And I know he is going to bless you. Today is the Sabbath of the Lord. And on Sabbath, we greet Happy Sabbath. And you will respond, Happy Day. And so wherever you are joining us from, I'm just greeting you, Happy Sabbath. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. All right. Um, we are going to begin our last program. And we appreciate the leading of God from day one to this time. As we end our program, I want to invite you for a special decision uh, making. Those who availed themselves for baptism yesterday, God bless you. God bless you so much. If you also want to join us and register your, your, your presence, maybe you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and your Lord, and you want to give yourself in for baptism, just register your presence. So many people gave themselves yesterday night to the Lord, and you can also be part. Soon and very soon, Jesus is coming again, and you need to be a partaker in his kingdom. God bless you for doing that. I am going to invite our musician, Mrs. Angelina Arthur Wilson, to give us the opening song. Happy Sabbath, everyone. The Lord bless you as you enjoy the song.
God bless you, Sister Angela, for your rendition. God bless you so much. Right now is the time that we pray. This is the last day. And I want you to pour your heart to the Lord. And thank him for leading us from day one to today. And whatever that you have on your heart that you want Jesus Christ to do for you, don't forget to pray for revival and reformation. It is very necessary. So pray at this hour. Whatever you have on your heart, lift it before the Lord. And he is ready to bless you and to keep you. Let us pray at this hour. We are thanking God for a renewed heart. We are thanking God for his presence with us. We are thanking God for how gracious he has been to us. Oh God, we thank you. Thank God at this hour. And I want you to keep on praying and thank God for blessing you with these messages. And right now, if you have anything to lift it before the Lord, this is the time. Pray. Pray. This is the time. Keep on praying. Pray. Jesus is with us. Keep on praying. He is our God. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. All right, as you try to bring your prayers to a close, pray for the message that is coming to us. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. All right, try and bring your prayers to a close. Try and bring your prayers to a close. And join me as we pray. Daddy Lord, our gracious Father, glory and honor be unto your name, Lord, at this hour. For your grace and your mercies and your leadings in our lives. Lord, we didn't count it so, but you've made it possible for us. You began the program with us from day one. And true to this day, you have led us. We say glory and honor be unto your name, O God. We praise your name, Father, in all things. We praise your name, Father, for your grace. And at this time, Lord, we pray thanking you for a renewed heart. The kind of convicting and life-transforming messages that you've given to us has illuminated us to see your glory. And so, Father, we pray thanking you. Thank you, God, for renewing a, a, a new spirit in our, in our heart. At this hour, Lord, we pray for resilience. We pray that you help us to be consistent. We pray that you help us to stay awake and on fire for you. No matter the crushing pressures that we go through, help us to be faithful. Father, keep us lawyer lord keep us uncompromising and help us to live forever for you in jesus christ's name we pray amen right now we are going straight away to take our scripture reading but before we take the scripture reading i would like to um, help you and invite you to register for the last time this is without charge you are just registering your presence for being here. You are telling us that you came. So just if you are in Ghana, take your phone and dial this code as you register. And if you are not in Ghana, just send your name and your location to the WhatsApp line that you see on the screen. So those in Ghana, register by dialing star 928 star 456 ash. Star 928 star 456 ash. God bless you. If you are not in Ghana, send us a WhatsApp message by testing your name and your location. And you add the 7 to it. And you are sending it to 0243 851 
0236-0243-851-636. We thank God so much. Today's message is captioned the last version. Wow. You heard version? Yes. It is version that we are going to talk about. But this is not a literal version. God has a special version for you in this end time. And it is going to be the last version in our life. We invite Sister Efia Abangwa Apple to read our scripture for us. Happy Sabbath. Today, our scripture reading will be taken from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Amen. God bless you, Sister Fia. God bless you. Oh, we praise God. We praise God. There is some kind of joy that I'm feeling. And I know you are also feeling same because God has blessed us this um, seven days. We are going to listen to the voice of God. But before then, we will take our theme song. Right after the theme song, you'll be hearing the voice of God's servant, Pastor Isaac Apple. He is going to speak to us this evening. And as we climax everything, remember, Jesus loves you. Lord Jesus, how long? How long ere we hear the glass song? Christ return it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, indeed. Christ return it. Dear friend, it has been an exciting journey with the Lord. And this morning, together, wherever you are, whether you are in Ghana, you are in South Africa, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, everywhere you are, let us join together and say, God is good. And all the time, that is his nature. And I'm so excited that this morning, some friends have decided to experience their first Sabbath observance. Hallelujah. Listen, you will never regret this. You will begin to see certain things taking place in your life. God is going to do wonders in your life. Once you rest in him and trust in him, he will take care of you as well. So may God bless you. It has been a wonderful journey, and I want to thank you so much. I uh, want to especially thank Hope TV Ghana for partnering with us for this wonderful program. Make sure every single day in your home, don't let your television be wandering in, in, on the air. Let it be on Hope Channel Ghana, the best Christian station in Ghana for your family and your life will not be the same. God bless you so much. And also Dr. Morris, God bless you for that wonderful message that you've given to us throughout the week you've been a wonderful you know um, person in our lives and my dear um angie 
Mrs. Angelina Arthur Wilson. God bless you so much. God bless you and use your ministry to change lives all over the world. And Pastor Nicholas, God bless you. Pastor, God bless you. You're always smiling, Pastor. <laughs> God bless you so much for um, the introduction and everything. We thank you so much. I want to thank um, eventdawn.com. Eventdawn.com. They have been helpful to us. They provided us with a short quote for, for interacting with you. It has been so wonderful. From the preparation, the pre-registration to throughout the seven days, they have been so helpful to us. We want to say, God bless you. If you have any event, whether wedding, um, church program, funeral, and you want to track attendance, you want to be able to send live SMS to people and stuff like that, contact eventdone.com. Their website is on the screen. Contact them, and then they will sort you out wonderfully. May God bless you. This morning, my dear friends, we are crowning everything. We are crowning everything. Our short quote for the last day, we want to know those who are with us, those who are worshiping with us for the first time in your life at a wonderful Sabbath of the Lord, the day Jesus Christ worshiped the Lord. Let me hear from you. The short quote is on the screen right now. Star 928 star 456 hash. Star 928 star 456 hash. Get to us. If you're outside Ghana, um, send your name and your location and say, Pastor, I'm worshiping with you live from so so and so country maybe you are in south africa past some worship with you in south africa we will see it right now the moment you send it i will see it because i'm communicating with you live here it's right here on my screen we will know where you are worshiping from our team here they will be praying for you and it's going to be a blessing in your life this morning my dear friends god has a very very important message some have indicated that they want to begin a brand new walk with the lord glory be to god I am praying that by the end of today's message, this morning message, you would make the decision to walk with the Lord forever in your life. And that decision, my dear friend, I promise you, it is going to be the best decision in your life. Remember that. Before I even forget, uh, my friend Jeffert, who has been helping us with the sign language and also our sister, um, um, Mercy, Today, Mercy is not here. Mercy has been helping us also in the sign language. God bless you guys so much. Before we get into this morning message, shall we have a word of prayer? We want to have a word of prayer right now. Ask the Lord, Father, this morning, speak to me. You have spoken to me throughout the week. As we end everything today, speak to me in a special way. Pray that simple prayer. Let us begin to bring our prayers to an end. Father, we thank you. You who created the heavens and the earth, we glorify your name. You who sit in your throne and the earth is your footstool, we praise your name. You've been with us from the beginning of this week. Today is the best day of our lives. Because we are before you on your holy day to worship you. Through using the power of the television and the internet, we have been connected from different parts of the world. We are one big family under you. And we can't just wait to hear your message for us this day. So Lord, as you've been doing for us throughout the week, speak to us. And Lord, especially I want to pray for all those who in a very special way have supported this program. Those who contributed financially. May you bless them abundantly. Those who provide the services like events done, may you prosper this business. Those who prayed and interceded and stood in the gap so that this program would succeed, may you prosper them in Jesus' name. Those who are there who brought others to watch, who even went to the extent of buying data for others to watch it, Lord, may you provide for them and bless them. Bless each and every one of us, especially those who, who every single night and this day are here just to be blessed with your word. May your words be indeed lambs unto their feet. And may you lead them from one victory to another. 
that your name will be glorified. Today, Father, we are here. And this morning, we want to hear your word. May your words indeed give us hope in you because you have promised that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. My dear friends, once again, I want to say God bless you. And you are welcome to this special service as we crown the hope in the that Bible lecture series. Throughout this week, the Lord has blessed us with wonderful messages. We started by looking at the first message on Sunday evening and the title was A Better World Order. It was followed with the next message, which was about the greatest scam in history, where we discovered that the enemy scammed God's people, but Jesus Christ through the death on the cross has restored us. The third message we looked at was lovely lies, deadly deceptions. And the fourth message that we discovered was the hidden secret of the Ashanti kingdom, where through the Ashanti kingdom we discovered the rest of God. And I'm happy that today, this morning, some people have decided to enjoy, to enter the physical rest of God through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The fifth message that we looked at was the mark of Cain, where we discovered the mark of obedience and the mark of disobedience. The sixth message, that was last night, and that message was kind of a mathematical in nature, and that was the mathematical proof that we are living in the last days. Indeed, God's word, through his word of prophecy, using divine calculations, we got to know that since the year 1844, we've been living in what the Bible describes in Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7, as the judgment hour of God. This morning, as we crown everything, God has a message for us. Before that, I want to especially thank those who supported this program financially. God used some of our friends to support financially. Some of them even went to the stand of helping us to boost the live feed on Facebook so that many others would be benefited. May the Lord never forget you. May you meet him. May he meet you always at the greatest point of need, even as you prepare for his soon coming. And all our action team members, God bless you for bringing people every day to join us. May the Lord remember you and always reward you bountifully. God bless you. This morning's message is a special one. It is the last message. And the message has been captioned, the last vaccine, the last vaccine. Whenever I mention vaccine or whenever you hear the word vaccine, vaccine, it has now become one of the most popular words around. The moment you go to Google and type VA, then it automatically continues with vaccine for you. Why? Because we all know what happened in the world. In the latter part, closing part of 2019, planet Earth was hit with an unknown virus. A virus which was never known before. Its characteristics and its way of attack was different from any other virus. This virus started somewhere in Wuhan, China. We heard it on news. I remember when I heard this, I, I saw this new news item on, on television that there has been a virus outbreak somewhere in China. I did not even think that it would even go throughout the country China. I thought it was something that was going to be contained in China. At a point in time, the images and the stories that we were hearing, it got to a point they became so serious that we thought these were just some conspiracy theories where we saw images of people dropping dead in China. On top of that, movies started coming out showing that something like this, some people believe were actually seen or prof, prof, uh, predicted that it would come. But when this disease broke out, the next year, 2020, every country, almost every country, including our country, Ghana, we entered into something that in my life I have never even seen before. For almost the entire year, university students were home. All students were home. Work, co I mean, companies were shut down. Government companies, offices, private were shut down. We entered into a new phase of our lives. And that was the virtual phase. Where church services was done virtually. Everything was done virtually. 
But when this was going on and countries were locked down, it was costing the economies. And so one thing that governments of the world and big time pharmaceutical companies were busily doing, scientists, when we were locked down, were busily doing it, was they were looking for a remedy for COVID-19. The race to discover or the race for which company or which country or which government will bring out the first vaccine became very tough. Companies like Moderna, um, Cassinino, Biologics, Invino, Sinovac, uh, Bionetech, Pfizer, a lot, University of Oxford, AstraZeneca, a lot of companies were in the lab. What were they looking for? They were looking for a vaccine to stop the spread and the killing of COVID-19. Why was the vaccine so important? Well, my dear friends, if you did not know, a vaccine is actually a substance that is used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against one or several diseases. And so any disease that comes in the world, especially infectious diseases, virus spread, bacteria, if there are no vaccine, that disease is able to do a lot of harm. But when people are vaccinated, they are, they are, the body produces antibodies. And these antibodies help the person to be able to be, be strong. The immunity is built and boosted so that the, person's, uh, the person can fight against that disease without the disease taking his or her life. My dear friends, by the grace of God, COVID-19 vaccine was discovered. A lot of companies have now produced different versions of COVID-19 vaccine. And now we are out of the lockdown. I am not here to talk about COVID-19 vaccine. I am here to talk about a different form of vaccine. A different form of immunity that every Christian living today needs to have. Why? Because something bigger something scarier something far more dangerous something that will close everything down bigger than COVID-19 is about to hit the world pay attention you see in the Bible anytime sin reaches its peak God intervenes with punishment to the wicked and salvation or deliverance to his people it happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. When their sin reached the throne of God, God descended and God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and rescued his people. When God's people were oppressed, the Bible says, God says, I have heard the cries of my people. In Egypt, God descended with plagues upon plagues. He destroyed the wicked, sinful nation of Egypt and took his people out. To the promised land my dear friend according to the bible when you read the book of revelation from Re revelation chapter 11 especially verse 18 the bible summarizes events right before the coming or the, the the battle of armageddon and the bible describes that the world or the nations were angry the state of the earth to this very day this moment as we you are, we are speaking the state of affairs of planet earth matches exactly the description of the last days that jesus christ gave to us in luke chapter 21 and matthew chapter 24. god is about to unleash the last great wind of destruction on earth and those winds of destruction of destruction would come in what the book of revelation describes as the seven last plagues hmm. something is coming so the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 26 verse 21, 21 says that see the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of earth for their sins the earth will disclose the blood shed on it the earth will conceal its slain no longer God is about to pour the greatest not 
even compared to what Pharaoh and his people saw, the greatest form of punishment to this wicked world. What Babylon has done changed God's law and order and is teaching people to speak and, and transgress God's law. Look at immorality. Look at lifestyle that government of the world have endorsed and have made laws against lesbianism homosexuality everything that is abomination nations of the world today have accepted it listen to me just as the sins of solomon so sodom and gomorrah got to the height where god says enough is enough god sent fire and burn Sodom and Gomorrah. God, this world has gotten to the point according to bible prophecy where god's seven last plagues will soon be unleashed According to the book of Revelation, the Bible speaks about these seven last plagues. Remember our subject for this morning, the last message, is the last vaccine. You need that vaccine. In Revelation chapter 16, the Bible tells us about these seven last plagues. In verse 2 of Revelation chapter 16, the Bible says the first plague will be poured on the earth and that will produce deadly source on people this plague indicates that there is no physical security outside of christ those who think that they can live their lives without christ a time will come where a plague will be poured and that plague will teach a lesson for everyone who thinks that there's life without christ the church and state unity that Babylon is now trying moving forward to bring the church and the government of the world together to enact laws to beat and destroy those who worship like Abel. God is going to pour so much plague. The first plague is going to be poured on them. God's people are under pressure. The authorities of the world declare that they are going to physically oppress God's people unless they receive the mark of the beast. But it is those who receive the mark of the beast who are going to be physically oppressed when God poured the seven or the first plague on them. God's son, Jesus, is our only protector. There is no safety outside anywhere. Revelation chapter 16 verse 3 says the second plague will be poured on the sea and the sea will turn into blood. Just imagine what will happen. If all the creatures of the sea, in the sea, all the fishes, the whales, the sharks, every living thing in the sea dies because of this. The stench. And once the sea turns into blood, everything will be destroyed. What does that mean? International companies, shipping companies, shipping business, fishing industries, the billion dollar tourism industry, everything will be collapsed. The economy of the world will be turned around the moment God pours this plague on the sea according to revelation chapter 16 verse 4 the bible says the third plague will be poured on the rivers and all the rivers of the world will turn into blood you see the river or rivers in bible prophecy signifies some kind of a source of support those who support babylon those who support the beast and the system those churches that have joined themselves to babylon and are teaching falsehood god is going to cut them off and babylon will be left alone the beast, the papacy will be left alone. They can't have any source of life anymore. Just as when um, Darius attacked Babylon, according to the book of Daniel, the Bible says they cut or they stopped, they, they diverted the supply of the river Euphrates. That symbolism indicates that the time is coming. God is going to divert the support system of Babylon and they will be brought down. At the time, at the end of time, at the end time, Christ our Lord is going to be our security. According to Revelation chapter 16, verse 8 to 9, the fourth plague will be poured on the sun, and the sun will scorch people so much. Sometimes we say the sun is hot. We have not seen anything yet. That plague is going to cause the sun to scorch on the wicked. You see that in the fourth plague, the sun scorches the wicked, and throughout the centuries, People have been worshipping the sun. We have sun worship. One of the major worship in the world. Along the line, it was translated into Sunday worship. In the final day, the conflict is going to be between those who worship God and those who worship the beast. So those who worship the beast 
worshiping the sun god, God is going to pour the plague on the source of so-called power and will destroy that worship. That plague says that Jesus Christ is the only one that needs to be worshipped. God is our creator. You don't need to accept any counterfeit worship. When God strikes the sun, then the fifth plague will come. In Revelation chapter 16, verse 10 to 11, the fifth plague will be poured on the beast. It will be poured on the seat or the throne of the beast. Babylon will be struck. That is why Revelation chapter 18, verse 4 says that, Come out of her, my people, lest you partake in her destruction. Babylon, those who put their trust on the system of the world, those who put their trust on human beings, calling people, my father, my spiritual this, my that, my that, ignoring the command of God. God is going to pour the fifth seal on the seat of Babylon. Again, Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 to 16. The Bible says the sixth seal will be poured, or the plague will be poured on the river Euphrates, signifying that the support system of the beast, signifying the support system of these so-called churches that have united with the state, it will be cut. The state will now stop supporting. Everything will go off and they will be left empty. But in Revelation chapter 16, verse 17, the Bible says the final plague, the seventh plague, we poured in the air. That will signify the second coming of Jesus Christ. You realize that the succession of these plagues is almost similar to the plagues that God poured on Pharaoh and the Egyptians when they decided not to let the Israelites go. But finally, when the final plague came, when all the firstborns died, the, the Israelites were let go. God's words makes us understand when the sixth place come and is poured on the river Euphrates and every support system is destroyed, the seventh plague will be poured in the air. The seventh plague represents the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now listen, those who receive this last day vaccination would be among those who will be able to survive the seven last plagues. By the way, the seven last plagues would take place in this world when god's saints are still here remember when god was pouring those plagues on the egyptians the jewish people were not out of egypt they were still in egypt but they were protected now is the time to get vaccinated my dear friend why because those who get vaccinated will be protected the king, king David says in Psalm 91, verse number 7, he says, A thousand may fall at your, at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Psalm 91, verse 9 to 11, if you say, The Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm would overtake you, no disaster would come near your tent, for he would command his angels concerning you to guide you in all your ways. When you are vaccinated, God will protect you from the seven last plagues. In Job chapter 5, verse number 19, Job says, He shall deliver you in sex trouble. Yea, yes, in seven, no evil shall touch you. God will deliver you. God will shield you. Jehovah will protect you. No evil shall come near thy dwelling. In the midst of trouble, God will provide for you. The question now is, how do I receive this vaccination? The COVID-19 vaccine, it is available free of charge everywhere you go. But this vaccine, where do I get it? How do I receive it? Well, my dear friends, the simple truth is that this vaccine is not found in a strange. It's not like the COVID-19 vaccine. You don't have to receive it. You don't receive it as a jab on your shoulder. This vaccine is simple. The only way to receive this vaccine is that you must die spiritually. Yes, unless you die, you cannot receive this vaccine. What kind of death is pastor talking about? I am talking about death in baptism. That, my dear friend, is God's ordained heavenly prescribed vaccination against the coming destruction in john chapter 3 verse 5 jesus christ explained it further he said 
Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of spirit. In other words, when the seventh plague is poured in the air and Christ is coming to take his people to, the, to heaven, no one, anyone who is not vaccinated, can, you can't go there. Romans chapter 6 verse 3, the Apostle Paul explains further what baptism is all about. He says, oh, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So my dear friend, when you, when you are baptized, you are dead in Christ. Just like when somebody is dead, they bury the person in the, in the earth. When you are baptized, you are buried in the water. The water represents the grave. Once you are put in the water, you are dead. You are dead to sin. And when you are brought out of the water, you become a brand new soul. A person who has received heavenly vaccination. Would you say an amen there? In verse 4 of Romans chapter 6, the Bible says, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You can never live a new life here without baptism. You can never enjoy the riches of heaven without baptism because baptism is an entrance into God's spiritual family. When you are baptized, the old self of sin is gone and the new self is born in Christ. You become heir of the kingdom. That is why in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19, the Bible says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. When you are baptized, you become one, one with God. You become a citizen of heaven. When we are baptized, we declare our allegiance. You physically take the mark of God on your forehead. You take a public stand for God. You show that from this day onwards, I am on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. But you see, let me tell you something. The devil knows. He knows that the baptism, he knows that baptism is the only way to be protected against the coming destruction. He knows that when you are baptized, you have been vaccinated and you have the Spirit of God living in you and you are a heavenly candidate. So the devil has counterfeited baptism. In Ephesians 4 verse 5, the Bible says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. But as we speak, the liar, the liar has counterfeited baptism. Be careful. Jesus says in John 8:44. When, he's, when he lies, speaking of the devil, when he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. He knows that anybody who is baptized has been saved. Because Jesus says, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water. He knows it. So he has counterfeited vaccine. A spiritual vaccine. I wasn't surprised when I read recently. That people have, st have started manufacturing fake COVID-19 vaccine. Just as they are fake COVID-19 vaccines, they are fake spiritual um, vaccine or spiritual baptism. Today, some people practice what is known as infant baptism. This is one of the most dangerous of them all. Where children who do not know how to talk, children who don't even know their name, Children who are less than a year old are taken to church and the priest baptize them. They baptize the children. When God's words has specifically said, go throughout the world and speak the gospel, preach the gospel. Those who believe the qualification for baptism is you got to believe the child does not even understand what is happening. And children are baptized. Some also practice what is known as baptism by sprinkling, where the priest would dip something in water or dip his son in water and then sprinkle it on the people. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are done. That, my dear friend, is dangerous. It is a false vaccine. It is not a vaccine that will save you. If you have been vaccinated 
when you were a baby, baptized when you were a baby, it is false. The question is, what is biblical baptism? How do we know that this is what God requires? Well, the answer is simple. How was Jesus Christ baptized? Baptism is actually for sinners. Christ never sinned, but he got baptized. Why? Because he wanted to give you and I an example of the right way of receiving the spiritual vaccine of God. How was Jesus baptized? Let's go to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 1, verse 9. When Jesus got baptized at the Jordan River by John the Baptist. In Mark 1, verse 9, the Bible says, At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The Jordan was a big river. Christ was not sprinkled with the Jordan. Christ was not baptized when he was a baby. The Bible says Jesus came from uh, Galilee in, in Nazareth and, and went inside the Jordan River and was baptized. Verse 10 of Mark chapter 1 says, Just as Jesus was coming up out of the Jordan of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Listen, my dear friend, Jesus Christ was baptized through what we call baptism by total immersion. Why is that important? Because baptism is a symbol of spiritual death in Christ. And a dead person is not, we don't sprinkle sun on a dead person and leave the dead body empty there. We bury the person in the earth. Baptism represents death in sin and be resurrected as a new creature. So when you are baptized, you need to be immersed in water. Any other form of baptism is a counterfeit. When you go to the book of Acts chapter 8, talking about the first African Christian. By the way, the first Gentile to become a Christian was an African you know, person, an African man from Ethiopia. In Acts chapter 8, verse number 36 and 37. In fact, before that, this man had come to Jerusalem to trade. And as he was going, he actually bought a copy of the book of Isaiah. And he was reading and did not understand. And God sent the apostle Philip there to explain to him. In Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 37, the Bible says, As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of, being, of my being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. You see, Philip said, if you believe, you may be baptized. Because un unless you believe, you can't be baptized. A child does not believe. A child cannot be baptized. And he answered and said, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now listen. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. You see, the Ethiopian Enoch accepted Jesus Christ before he was baptized. Again, the baptism of the Ethiopian Enoch indicated that he was taking a public stand for Jesus. Again, from the test, we get to know that the Ethiopian Enoch and Philip, they went into the water. The Ethiopian Enoch was fully baptized. He was fully immersed. Why? Because, listen, this is so simple. The word baptism, it comes from a Greek word. That Greek word is baptizo. Baptizo means to plant something or put something totally in water. Like you are washing your clothes in a bucket of water. You put the dirty clothes deep in the water. You soak it. That is what the word baptizo means. And again, there is a misconception that you need to be baptized in a flowing river you need to baptize in, in 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 the sea or a river not a lake you see listen the water does not wash our sins physically i mean nobody even knows the color of sin what is important is that you are buried in water and so when you have enough water where the person can totally be immersed, it can be in a swimming pool, it can be in a river, it can be in a sea, it can be in a specially prepared baptismal ground or baptistry, wherever there is enough water so that we can totally immerse the person. My dear friends, it is biblically accepted baptism. That is what the Bible requires. 
But is it really necessary, Pastor? Is it necessary to baptize? Well, Jesus Christ says in Mark 16, verse 16, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe would be condemned. In other words, when you believe, the next step is you got to be baptized. Throughout this week, God's word has come to us. We have been blessed with truths that we never even knew existed in the Bible. Do you believe in that? Yes, very good. But the next step is you have to be baptized because unless you are baptized, you are not protected from what is coming. Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, In the time of my favor, I heard you. And the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. My dear friends, everything is ending. We are ending everything today. This morning, this Holy Sabbath day, we are ending everything. But the truth is that today, you have to receive Christ and you have to be baptized. I'm not here to call you to come and give us money. I'm not here to come tell you to do this. Come for a country. Come for counsel. No. The most important thing is your soul. Because after everything, you are going to face judgment. After everything, the seven last plagues will be poured. Paul says, now is the day of salvation. This day, this holy Sabbath morning, wherever you're watching this message from, God says, this morning, this moment, now is the time of salvation. In Acts chapter 22 verse 16, the Bible says, And now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. What are you waiting for? My brother, what are you waiting for? Throughout the week, you have heard God calling you. You have heard his voice. Every evening, when the appeal is made, you hear God speaking to you. But you've hardened your heart. What are you waiting for? You see, the truth is that there are two things that are uncertain in this life. Two things, they are uncertain. Nobody knows. The first one is the day that you will die. And the second one is the day that Christ will come. Any of these two things can happen anytime. But the truth is that if you should lose your life today, if you should lose your life today, your probation has ended. So the question is, why are you waiting? There's no more time. Very soon, it will be too late. This morning, Jesus Christ says in John 5 verse 24, Truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. Today, do you believe? Do you believe? Jesus has spoken with us throughout the week. Everything that he needs to tell us, he has told us. Do you have an ear? Do you have an ear? Reminds me of a funny story. Very, very funny story. But holds important lesson for me and you. Story is told that one day in the forest, the king of the jungle, the lion, was going to celebrate his birthday. And then he said to his servant, For this my birthday, I need a sheep to slaughter for my birthday. The moment the information got out, all the sheep in the area went indoors and locked themselves because nobody wanted to die. They were just waiting for the birthday to be over so they could go back to their lives. One morning, one sheep who had three children, they were hungry. So the mother told them, I need to step out and look for food, otherwise we'll die here too. <coughs> so before the sheep went outside, this sheep mother looked at the children and said, I am begging you, do not step outside. Do not step outside. Please, if you step outside, you may be caught and you become somebody's meat. The lion is angry. Don't step outside. Do you hear me? They say, yo, we've heard you. 
the woman the mother left one of these three kids stopped on one said i'm tired let me go and play outside the other two children said be careful mama said nobody goes oh i'm smart when i see the lion coming i will jump here when the lion is coming i'll jump here this sheep was playing outside the other children were calling it come inside it's dangerous out there so if the lion is coming i'll jump here whenever they say if the lion is coming i'll jump as it was jumping not knowing the lion was right behind it they shouted look behind before this poor sheep could run the lion pounced on him and caught it the lion sent the sheep killed it sent it to his um, um chef and funny thing is the chef was a cat cat and meat they don't stand together but the lion warned the cat and said look if you eat anything in this meat i will kill you the lion the chef said no no i'm going to eat anything i'm going to prepare what you gave me after the, she the chef the cat has prepared the soup with this sheep meat the chef was there the soup was just going through the nostrils he, it, it could not control itself so he, he he took the ladder looked into the soup and then took one of the ears of the goat and chewed it after finishing they said hey the goat has two ears now that i've eaten one the lion will find out let me eat the other one too so that when he comes i tell him the goat did not have ears he ate the other one the lion came poured the soup in the bowl checked every part and said hey where is the ears and said ears what are you talking about don't you remember the goat that you brought here it did not have ears the goat was earless that goat did not have ears he said what do you mean the goat had ears it became an argument then he said well if you don't believe me go and ask the mother the cat didn't know the lion will actually go and ask the mother the lion went in and called the mother and said look i'm going to ask you a question if you don't answer me well i'm going to eat you as well the mother was shaken and full of fear as well as sad because right there in front of her she could see the dead body of her son in the soup then he said look let me ask you your son did he have an ear or not the mother with tears in the eyes looked at the face of the lion turned and looked at the cat looked at his son who is now somebody's meat and then looked at the lion's face again with tears in the eyes and said mr lion unfortunately the truth is that my son did not have ears my son did not have ears because if my son had ears he would not be in your soup today my dear friend throughout the week god has spoken to us jesus christ says in matthew eleven fifteen, whoever has ears let them hear revelation says whoever has ears let them hear what the spirit says unto the churches do you have ears the seven last plagues will be soon be poured on earth those who have ears will run for baptism those who have ears will run for salvation those who have ears will run and be rescued before it is too late now is your time this is the final appeal i am making and listen the voice of home media team as well as voice um hope tv ghana team we are making every arrangement possible that from today up going throughout the days ahead of us wherever you are let us know indicate that you want to receive this vaccine of baptism we are going to make arrangement for you it does not matter where you are we have friends everywhere we have ministers everywhere they will be glad to get you baptized as we speak there are camp meetings going on almost everywhere in uk in us in ghana everywhere just let us know right now by sending your name and your location to us on the whatsapp number right now right now right now this is the appeal go ahead take the whatsapp number 0243 851 636 write us text us right now or you can send it through text message if you don't have data send us text message or whatsapp and say pastor i want to be baptized because there's no more time there's no more time very soon everything will be over very soon it will be too late 
this may be is your first time of observing God's holy Sabbath. Let me tell you, better things are coming for you. Great things are coming for you. Deliverance is coming for you. But you need to seal your conviction with baptism. And the opportunity is now. Right now. As you write your name, send me your name right now. Pastor, I want you to get baptized. When I got this message way back in 2004, I remember the day. It was 28 February 2004. I was glad that I moved. God's Spirit moved me and I got baptized. My life has never been the same. Something great is about to change. Come in your life. It begins by you dying in baptism. Rise up. Rise up. Walk, begin to rise up and walk through the water and in the truth. And God will save you. So go ahead. As we end this program, write your name. And then send us your location. For example, my name is Isaac Apple from Ghana, specifically Winneba. Send us something like that. Maybe your name is uh, Mabel from Kenya. Which part of Kenya? Nairobi. Let us know. Give us your location. We would make arrangement for you. I will be glad. My team, everybody here, Pastor Nicholas, they are all here. Everybody will be glad to help you get baptized. Because now is the time. I want to pray with you. If you have decided to send us your name, even now, some are sending. If you have decided to do that, rise, your, rise up right now. Let me pray with you. God bless you. Those who are sending their names, God bless you. Keep sending. Keep sharing. Whatever test message, whatever, uh, SMS, um, WhatsApp, send it now. Send us your specific location and we'll make the arrangement for your baptism today. Those who are in Accra, and, and Western region and Central region very soon. Even today, we are going to get some people baptized today. Rise up. Rise up. If you are watching this from Winneba or from Suedro in Ghana, in any part of Central region, Kasua, let me hear from you right now. Because today, this moment, there's going to be baptism for you. Today, right now. Rise up. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. God is here. Let me pray with you. God bless you. God bless you for giving your life to Christ. God bless you. God bless you so much. Let me pray with you. Father, it has been a wonderful journey with you. Seven days of hope. Seven days of deliverance. Seven days of empowerment. Seven days of breaking of the devil's chain and sinful oppression. Today, we are free. Free, free in the Lord. Glory be unto your name. Look at your children who are on their feet. Look at those who have begun sending their names that they want to be baptized. Look at those who even, maybe they've been baptized. But after hearing the truth, they realize that they were baptized in a wrong way. But they want to receive the true and biblical baptism. They are on their feet. They've, start, they've started sending their names. May you receive them in the name of Jesus. Before they even are put in the water, Lord, may you baptize them with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, as you baptize them, may you write their names in the book of life. I ask for one thing. Give them victory in Jesus' name. Give them victory in Jesus' name. Deliver them from the enemy in Jesus' name. Every sinful addiction, may you break them in the name of Jesus Christ. May you set them loose from this day onward. Just as on that Sabbath day, you looked at that woman who had been bound by a spirit for 18 years and said, woman, thou art loose. This morning, Father, may you declare that your children are loose. This morning, Father, may you declare that they are loose. They are loose from their evil problems. They are loose from their sinful problems problems they are loose from their diseases they are loose from their doubt they are loose from their fears may you set them free even as they prepare to be baptized in your name may you deliver them once and forever in the name of jesus christ thank you father for what you've done for us thank you for saving us for we have asked this and many many other blessings in no other name but in the name of your son and our dear lord savior jesus christ we are prayed let all the saints declare, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God bless you so much. On behalf of the entire Voice of Hope team, I want to say God richly bless you for making a point to join us all throughout this week. God bless you. 
I'm still waiting for your name. If you just receive this prayer, give me your name. Pastor Nicholas is here. He's compiling the names. Our team members are here compiling the names. Um, Hope TV teams, they are compiling the names. If you have any question, please don't hesitate. Send the question to us on the number on the screen right now. And then we will get back to you. Whatever it is, Jesus is with you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord live with you. May he grant you the power of the Holy Spirit. May he help you to be an overcomer till the day that we will meet him in his kingdom above. God bless you, my dear friend, and have a happy, happy Sabbath. Shalom. Before we go on, I would like us to show our appreciation to some people and recognize their effort that they have done in support of this work. First, I want to thank you, our viewer, for your time and everything. And secondly, we would like to appreciate our donors. You know, efforts and money were put into this program and some people promised and fulfilled they donated to the support of this program. You can also be part when, if you want to support the Voice of Hope Media and our programs. The number that you see on the screen, you can contact us and donate whatever amount that you want to use in support. We also want to thank the management of the Hope Channel Ghana for partnering with us in this program. In fact, it has been a blessing and we thank God so much for that. We also want to um, register her appreciation to Dr. Morris Mensa for being there for us wherever the call is being um, put in. Doctor is the director and the, the one in charge of Amari's Naturopathic Clinic. Doctor is treating a lot of diseases and I want you to be in touch with him if you want to discuss anything on health with doctor. Um, you can reach doctor on 0548-785-790. 0548-785-790. The clinic is located at Oyarefa Tipa Junction in Accra here. You can, you can see doctor and everything will be okay with you. We will also like to thank this group so much for what they have done for us. In fact, the code that we used to uh, register our presence, that system was built for us for free. And if you are in need of such services, you can contact them. EBIT HR system, EBIT HR system, um, EBIT Company Limited and Arcacel Company Limited they are located in Accra here. They provide services in staff attendance, employee payroll, leave um, employee data and appraisers. A lot of things that they do. You can contact them on 0266-777-101. 0266-777-101. You can contact Ebit Company Limited and Arcacel Company Limited, and they will help you in all. We thank all of you. We appreciate you and continue to be with the voice of Hope Media and the Hope Channel Ghana, and your life will never be the same. God bless you.